Elkara Ham Radio presents a Time Machine Tuesday vintage video release. Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at Elkara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elkara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, Elkara on the Bench. And this was a quick little project I just did, and I wanted to uh, document it. And I thought about filming this, but it was over before I could get started. <laughs> and so I just wanted to bring it to you as a series of still images and just kind of uh, go over what I was doing and thinking for each step of the way. So we're going to be covering, uh, again, some still images, but I'll do a voiceover. And we'll just talk about, again, what I was thinking about, what I wanted to accomplish. And it's a very fast project to do. It's only going to take a few minutes once you buy a box to use for your systems. So we'll get into the next segment here in just a moment. All right, so for this next image, um, this is something that I have been doing for a while now, and I'm actually going to continue doing this with some radios. Uh, I'm, I bought this large water bottle container that has a shoulder strap and has a bottom pocket and a side pocket there, and it has some uh, webbing that you can attach even more objects to. But it's a, enough volume in the main space where you can put a couple of handy talkies, a few accessories, and that bottom pocket actually holds one of my roll-up Slim Jim antennas. It's uh, one of the heavier uh, ladder line style, but it fit in there almost perfectly like it was made for it. And it's still a good way to keep a couple of handy talkies uh, available to you. Nice shoulder strap makes it easy if you're out hiking and camping and things. would be easy to keep those close by and work with those. But I wanted something uh, with more impact protection in the car, and uh, and so I decided to switch over to a box, uh, sort of a go box style of doing things. But I'll keep using this mechanism as well, but uh, we'll get into the box here in this next segment. All right, so the box I chose to use for this little project is one of the Harbor Freight, uh, and you can get them on Amazon as well in some places, the Apache brand. And there's different sizes, you know, the 1800, 28, uh, 38, 48, 58, and so on. And these are, you know, sort of uh, higher end box knockoffs, but they're pretty impact resistant. They have the pick and pluck foam, they have a couple of lock capabilities, reasonably water and dust uh, repellent. And going with the theme of having a couple of inexpensive handy talkies, a couple of bowfangs that are tri band, I didn't need to spend maybe two or three hundred dollars on a box. <laughs> you know, I don't need to spend several times more money on the box than I did for the radios. Now, when you have some more expensive radios, you may want to step up to a more expensive box. There's all kinds of really good brands out there. But I thought for this, uh, the uh, the Apache was going to be fine. I went to, uh, to a local store, and it took me a few minutes, but I, I picked out uh, this size. Uh, I thought about going with the one larger, but I decided this would be a good size, and I can get the, the kinds of things in here that I want. And I think you'll see it worked out pretty well for me. Not too expensive. These uh, This size is about $30, but of course Harbor Freight has those 20 and 25% off coupons, so I, I had a 20% handy and, and used that for a discount. So we'll get into how I uh, put things into the interior of the box here in just a moment. All right, so the first thing uh, that I'm going to use and, and the way I'm going to use the space of the box is for the lid. You've got some, uh, some, uh, some of the egg carton style foam up there. And it's not uh, fully glued in or anything, which you could do if you wanted to, to keep it a little more stable. But a lot of times you'll see folks, and this isn't the first time this, is, this uh, project has been done, but just sort of my take on it. Uh, so one of the things you can do with that space up there behind the foam is you can store some flat objects. Uh, I've got a couple of manuals up there now. I'm going to be putting my copy of my license up there. I may uh, get a nifty guide, uh, put it up there, or towards the bottom as well. There's some space, and you'll see how I use some of that. Uh, so don't forget about this space is the main thing. You can put some flat items up there that uh, don't take up a lot of uh, volume, uh, and, and it's a, a piece of space that doesn't have to go to waste. So like a lot of folks, that's what I'm doing with it for now, and I may add a couple of, of thin things to there, like maybe the copy of my license or whatever. So that's the top of the box, and we'll uh, move on into the interior and how I'm using the multiple layers of the interior here in these next little sections. And so for this Apache box, uh, this particular size, at least, I suspect they're, they're mostly the same design. Uh, and this is the, the 2800. Uh, you've got a, uh, 
yeah, maybe a one inch, half three quarter, one inch uh, layer of regular foam on the bottom. And then you've got a layer of pick and pluck, which is probably about an uh, inch and a quarter, somewhere in that range. Second layer of pick and pluck, about the same. And then you've got that layer of more of the sort of egg carton style uh, in the lid. And that's, uh, you know, inch or inch and a quarter up there, probably an inch. So I removed the two layers of pick and pluck. And so on this bottom layer, but still with a little foam towards the bottom, uh, I put some of the accessories that I just want to have as part of the kit. Uh, this is, Some of this is stuff I wouldn't use very often. I've got the two ear pieces that came with it. Um, you know, I'm not going to use those all the time, but there could come up a situation, and you might as well have them handy if it doesn't really, uh, not a hard thing to do. I've got the, um, and I, you might want to think about this one, I've got a USB cable that you can plug into the base charger uh, so you can charge your batteries, your radios. And so I've pretty much always got usually multiple <laughs> uh, portable uh, battery systems in my car and, and ways to charge things. And um, I'm also, you'll see later, I've got the, uh, the AC adapter uh, in here for the charging base. But I've got one of these USB adapters, and you might want to pick one or two of those up for a, a Go box like this or just a portable box like this. So that's down here. Programming cable, good quality programming cables down here. I've also got a SMA to SO239 adapter. Uh, if I wanted to hook a handy talkie up to the tri-band antenna that's on the top of my car. Uh, if I felt I was going to get some better uh, reception that way or something. I could do that, so I've just got that adapter in there. Now, I'm also going to be putting one of the Slim Jim uh, type uh, antennas in here. And that's also going to tie into another project uh, on the bench that I'm going to be uh, working on here, hopefully uh, pretty soon. And that is creating a Slim Jim. There's several good sources. I, I've bought a couple of different styles of Slim Jim from folks on uh, on eBay, and both of them seem to be very good quality and seem to work very well and test very well, SWR and so forth. Uh, but uh, as a bench project, and just, just because it's what a lot of hams do at least at some point in their hobby, uh, I decided I want to try to make one, and because uh, I want several more. I want at least one more uh, 2 meter, 70 centimeter, uh, but I, I also have these tri-band antennas, so I'm going to make up at least one, maybe two, uh, 1.25 meter for the 220 band. Uh, same concept, you know, just a little bit different measurements and things. So I've already got the uh, twin lead cable, some uh, 174 coax, and some SMA connectors. So I've got uh, most of the things I need for that project, and I'll, I'll try to get to that uh, fairly soon. Now that the weather's cooling off, uh, you can either go into, depending on where your, your bench or whatever it is, you can get out there and, and spend some time. Uh, and or get out and, and test some things when it's not uh, 90 or 100 degrees. And, uh, you know, here in, uh, in Kentucky and in the south with, with the humidity, it's not always a lot of fun to be out there, but uh, we do like to get out as much as we can. So uh, there'll be probably at least that one other addition here, a, a really nice thin light uh, Slim Jim antenna. So we got a few things down here at the bottom. There, there's room for just a little bit more. I don't need to put all my, that much. And there's the two uh, upgraded antennas. We mentioned those in the... Uh, the, the first video in the series on radios where we went over handy talkies uh, like to upgrade the antennas so again these two particular HTs in this kit are tri-band capable as is the mobile unit in my car so these are the Nagoya 320A antennas because that is a tri-band for all the rest of my HTs I usually get the Nagoya NA771 which is a dual band upgraded dual band so they fit in here nicely as well, not too much of a bend on them or anything. So that's what I'm doing in the first level. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next section, and uh, we'll slowly work our way up towards the top. So in this uh, this uh, still shot right here, uh, I just wanted to uh, to show this for a second. I mentioned in the last segment that uh, I have a couple of Slim Jims that I've purchased, both from, from sellers who are on eBay. The one on the left I got first, and I got that one a year ago, more than a year ago. Uh, and it's the, the fairly classic, uh, heavier, thicker, ladder line style. It's been very well made. It's worked very well for me. Um, I can reach places 20, 30, 40 miles away with it sometimes. If you're on a little bit of a hill or you have it up a little bit. Uh, so it's worked very well. It's a little bit heavier and thicker. Uh, but that one's worked well. And then the newer one I just got is on the right. And uh, that one uses that very thin, light, flexible twin lead. It's like old TV antenna wire. If you remember the stuff from like the 70s and 80s before cable became so, so prevalent in coax. It used to be kind of a pinkish color. Uh, this is just black. And I just bought 100 uh, feet of that, I guess it was. 
and some uh, some other things so I can I can try my hand at making a, a slim gem like this. But this is a, it seems like it's very good quality. The heat shrinking and everything it seems very nice. Tested very nicely on two meters and 440. So and and the, neither one of these is really all that expensive. So if you're not as much into the uh, the maker and the do-it-yourself side of things, um, there are some good sources for these uh, on. Um, on eBay and that kind of stuff. Uh, again, I have no regrets of buying either one of these. They were in the $25, $25 $30 range. And for somebody else to put their time and labor and, and to produce a good quality product, I feel like that those are pretty good prices for that kind of thing. But I'm gonna try my own hand at, uh, at the really lightweight style there on the right and see if that uh, turns out for me. But I just wanted to show these off. So I'm gonna be putting um, probably two of those, those really small light ones on the right that style uh, into this box you know one that that does the two meters and 40 or 70 centimeters uh, the 146 and the, the 440 and then I'm gonna build a uh, a 1.25 meter you know the 220 megahertz again I could buy those the, the person who I bought that small one from he builds both styles and again, I think the prices are reasonable but uh, you know I just want to try my hand at doing it and that'll become another uh, little from the bench El car from the Brent bench episode whether it's filmed or another set of series like that one that'll, that'll probably take a little bit longer this project was over so fast like I said there wasn't hardly much to film so I just wanted to show those off and there's all kinds of variations on these and again these are a good place where you might want to get into the do-it-yourself the maker side of things so th those will be going in a little bit later uh, down in that bottom section that we just saw so now we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, the mid tier as the beginning of the mid tier of, of the box and how it's going to get laid out all right, so as we work our way now into the mid-tier, I've put in the first layer of the thicker uh, pick-and-pluck foam, probably an inch and a quarter, something in that range. And I really wasn't going to do much here uh, as the intermediate layer of, uh, of protection. The charging base is a little taller and thicker, and I didn't want to put it flat. I wanted to have it vertical. So I did have to cut out a section uh, for the, the charger base to go into, as you'll see in the top layer. And that was pretty much it. I didn't really do much to this layer. So uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the top layer where most of the magic happened. All right, so now we're at the top layer of the pick and pluck foam, and uh, I've got things uh, uh, cut out and, uh, and laid in there, plucked out. And um, I took my time, and I did use a, a marker, and I did kind of draw things out. I, I had one area where somehow I made a little bit of a mistake, and, and sometimes what happens is you, uh, you, you get a little bit off on the edges of the pick and pluck, you know, because they're... Um, half inch squares probably and I think that's what happened there in the in the very center part but primarily uh, it went well uh, I've seen videos on this a lot of us have again these types of boxes have been put together for a long time and this was just my initial efforts at it so I've got the radios over on the uh, the left hand side and I've got the dual extended batteries sort of at the top of this picture the uh, the, the regular batteries in the center the AC charging block there uh, towards the, the bottom, which is the front of the box, but the bottom of the picture. And then you can see that, that sort of angular charging base over on the right. And again, it's kind of wide, so that's why the second layer, uh, or either first layer from the bottom or second layer from the top of the pick and plug, I needed to, uh, to uh, create a cavity there. But everything fits in nicely, and I'm also going to use some of the spare foam uh, as some, uh, some additional protection between uh, some of these uh, objects and things. But it worked out pretty nicely, and everything is going to be very well protected. Uh, you know, decent levels of dust and water protection and that kind of thing. Uh, it's not really meant to uh, get left out in the rain or get submerged or anything like that. Uh, again, there are way more expensive and higher quality boxes out there, <laughs> just like there's way more expensive uh, radios and things out there. But I think for the price points of everything involved, these are good matches, and it's going to give it a good level of protection. You know, and, and I'll be relatively careful with this stuff, but the occasional drop or something. It, a lot of it is just organization. It's going to help me keep all these components organized, easily accessible, and it's easily transportable as well. I've got one final still picture just, uh, just to kind of show the finished project, uh, but that was pretty much it. A fairly quick, nice, simple little project to do while I was spending some time in my, uh, in my office anyway. And I just wanted to share it with you folks. Again, these have been done. There's, there's already videos on YouTube and things. This is just my little take on it, and I uh, just wanted to share that with folks. So we'll start wrapping this one up in this very last little segment, and uh, we will see you folks uh, in the last segment. All right, so this is the last segment, folks, and this is going to be real short just to uh, finish out this, this little project. 
uh, this is everything in the box, right? It, I know it looks like the first, uh, uh, kind of like the first picture when the, when it was still you know just empty. But this is actually uh, everything I just showed you. Everything's in the box. Uh, it's going to be well protected. Of course, you can add locks to it if you need to, and it has the pressure relief if you do, uh, say, uh, fly with this or something like that. Uh, I'm not planning on doing that kind of stuff, but uh, keeping it in my car, keeping it handy, since, again, I do have a tri-band in the car as well. Um, there's all kinds of these types of boxes, and, and there's a, a wide spectrum of price points. Uh, again, to match the inexpensive nature of the equipment I had, I went with an inexpensive box. But this, this concept and this procedure is going to be pretty much the same whether you buy the really expensive brands or not. And, again, there are some really nice ones out there with different colors and everything. You know, if you really want to uh, get a, a day glow orange or, or whatever kind of colors, yellows and all kinds of things, reds. Quick and easy project, folks. Uh, this is one I think anybody could tackle. Uh, we're not talking specialized uh, soldering skills or anything like that. So if you've ever wanted to get some equipment organized, there's all kinds of sizes and shapes of box. Uh, Harbor Freight has different kinds of boxes. They've got the aluminum boxes, if you prefer that style, and some sizes and shapes of those. And then they've got these in different sizes and shapes. And then, of course, the other brands on the market. So, again, if you've got some equipment you want to get organized, uh, go out there and, and maybe put something like this together. It's, uh, you know, a one-day project, a part-of-a-day project. You know? you know, other than running to get the box and coming back, once I was home, I was done in 10, 15 minutes tops. Like I say, by the time I just kind of was laying it out and taking a look at it, I was pretty much done. And I thought, well, I guess I won't, uh, won't turn on the camera. And I said, well, I'll just take some still pictures and share it with people that way. So this is Chris, KY4CKP, for Elkara on the Bench, 73.